Hello, welcome to the Wildline Podcast. I'm your host, Dan. This is a podcast about movies and how much money they make at the old box office. Uh, so I'm a little bit late this week, been very busy Sunday and Monday, but I thought I would get in an episode here on Monday night to talk about what happened over the weekend because it was kind of, it was a really interesting weekend. It wasn't like super like over the top tons of money was made but it was really fascinating with some different types of movies opening up so i I really wanted to to do a show this weekend uh, or for this weekend i should say um so what are we going to do we're going to do a normal thing we're going to walk the top 10 um do some deeper dives on the wide release openers uh this week which would be oceans 8 uh hereditary and uh hotel artemis um uh, we'll talk a little bit more in depth about those films and how they did and their scores and stuff like that and how that re- was reflected in their box office performance. Uh, I'll talk a little bit about maybe one or two limited releases and then we will look forward to see what's happening for the rest of June. So let's dive right into this. Number one this weekend at the box office was Ocean's 8 uh, coming in. Uh, and these are actuals now. Usually I'm, I do the show uh, Sunday morning-ish, Sunday afternoon I only have estimates for the weekend. These are the actual numbers. They usually come in uh, Monday afternoon. Uh, so special t- today. Uh, Ocean's 8 came in at $41.6 million to be exact. Uh, in about 4,145 theaters. Uh, its per theater average was just over $10,000. Uh, that was on a production budget of $70 million, just to give you some reference point. Now, uh, just in terms of that performance... Uh, going into last week, tracking for Oceans 8 was on the lower to mid side of the 30s. Um, Variety said something like low 30s to mid 30s. And then as we got a little bit closer, like right before, um, I think Hollywood Reporter or Box Office Pro is saying high 30s, low 40s. So this really does fit right into... Uh, what people were thinking uh, as it was being released. A couple of weeks ago, the tracking was a little bit lower. I'm not sure why that is, and I'm not sure... um, I'm not sure why people thought that this wasn't going to have a decent performance. I kind of felt that way just because the marketing seemed really underwhelming and way too late. Um... But I guess I was proven wrong here by Warner Brothers and their sort of campaign for this. Uh, it was a wide open weekend uh, in terms of uh, sort of tier A blockbuster wide releases. Uh, Hereditary was the only other thing that was coming out, and that's more of like a, an art horror film. Uh, so it was a wide open weekend for Ocean's Eight. You know, obviously it is part of a bigger Ocean's Eleven series. Uh, it's the all female version. One thing that didn't happen with this movie. Uh, that did happen with the female, all-female version of Ghostbusters was there wasn't a lot of trolling on this one. There wasn't a lot of alt-right, neo-Nazi, white supremacists going after this film for showcasing women, which is just... I can't believe I have to say that. It's 2018. Five years ago, this stuff was not out in the open as much as it is now, but thanks, Trump, I guess. Now all these goons are out uh, trying to attack women and people of color, and it's just disgusting and gross, but it's happening. Uh, and it certainly happened with Ghostbusters. It happened with uh, The Last Jedi a little bit, even Force Awakens. Uh, you had a person of color as a lead and a female, and it just for some reason it gets the trolls into a feeding frenzy. Um, that didn't seem to happen here with Ocean's 8. I'm not really sure why. Um, it seems like it could have been a target for, um, abuse and attacks, but it just it didn't seem like it really registered on the radar for a lot of the troll types. Um, in terms of what uh, critics thought, 68% on Rotten Tomatoes, so okay. Uh, critical, critical consensus, uh, critical consensus, I can't speak. Uh, Ocean's 8 isn't quite as smooth as its predecessors but still has enough cast chemistry and flair to lift the price of a ticket from film goers up for an undemanding caper. Up for an undemanding caper. I can't, I clearly cannot read out loud. Um, critics didn't like it. I mean, that's just pretty much a, 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 as close as you're going to get. They didn't think it was a, a train wreck, uh, but they didn't like it that much. Uh, audience score is 52% on Rotten Tomatoes. I don't trust that because of the trolls. Um, cinema score, which is also weird to say, I trust a little bit more. So old school, 
It is officially 40 years old now. Oh, wait, no, is that 40 years old? Yeah, 40 years old. Uh, started in 1978. Um, so, uh, oh, sorry, cinema score for Ocean's 8 was a B plus, which is okay. That's not bad. Um, that falls in line, I believe, with the other Ocean's movies. Um, Ocean's 11 did a B plus. Ocean's 12 did a B minus. Ocean's 13 uh, did a B plus as well. So it's right in line with the other films. Uh, so critics are kind of like a little muted on it. Um, audiences weren't ecstatic about it, but they weren't that sort of upset about it. Deadline has a little bit more detail about the cinema score. Uh, females were 69% of this audience for Ocean's 8, which totally makes sense, right? Uh, they gave it a, a cinema score of B+. The under 25s, uh, which were only 31% of the audience, gave it an A-. minus. So the younger people liked it a little bit more. Um, you know, in terms of how it relates uh, box office performance-wise to the other Ocean's films, uh, the adjusted... So technically, it's supposed to be a record for the franchise, but we got to adjust gross here. Uh, to see sort of, I don't know, Deadline saying, is saying it was a record, and I read that, and I was like, I gotta read this again. Uh, still the best debut for the franchise, and a solid start, uh, which will be a good piece of counter-programming in this event-filled marketplace. Uh, I don't know, I, I did the adjusted, it's not even really close to the one, so I don't know what they're talking about. Um... Maybe that's an error deadlines part. I don't know what's going on. Uh, so adjusted. Let's talk adjusted box office opening numbers for the Ocean series. Uh, this is obviously 41.6. Uh, in 2018 dollars, uh, Ocean's 13. Uh, the last movie that came out was 48. Ocean's 12 was 57. Uh, and Ocean's 11, the original, was 61 in 2018 dollars. Ocean's 11 came out in 2001. Uh, if you remember that far back. Um, so it's not really that close to any of those, except for 13. It's certainly not close to the original. So I don't know where Deadline's getting that number. I don't know if that's like puffing up the movie a bit for Warner Brothers. Is Warner Brothers paying off dead or Deadline? Who knows? Uh, the performance is okay. Like it's not, it's not fantastic. What, what, what is really going to tell the tale of this movie is its multiplier. If it has a 3x multiplier and does 120, that'll be awesome. That'll be so good for this movie. I think anything over 100 million um, for this, I think, is going to be a win. The budget was pretty low, uh, relatively. I don't know what internationally the audience is for a movie like this. Um, my guess is that it's okay. Um, maybe like a 40 60 split, 40% domestic, 60% foreign on its total box office take. That's a wild guess, but I think that might be somewhat close to being accurate. Uh, it doesn't seem like a movie that's going to be like 20% domestic and 80% international. It doesn't seem that strong internationally. Um, but I think it's an okay performance. I, you know, it's if it was in the low 30s, I'd be like, ah, oh, it's kind of an underperformance. Warner Brothers is not going to be happy. Uh, if it was in like the mid to high 40s or, like, or higher, that would be a breakout to me. It's just kind of like a single right down the middle, you know? Get on first base, that's pretty much it. Not, not Nothing too spectacular about it. I am really interested to see how it plays out over the next few weeks. Uh, what, what do I think about the multiplier? What do I think it's going to be? Now, I don't know the other Ocean's multipliers off the top of my head. Uh, but I'm assuming they're pretty decent. You know, you had a couple holiday openings there, and that usually those weekends are depressed, and then it plays very well in the, the subsequent weekends. Uh, so multipliers tend to be, uh, my guess is definitely near the three-ish mark for a movie like this. Um, if it goes below three, it's not the end of the world. It, it does have the possibility of doing, you know, a three, two, three, three. Uh, which puts it in really good territory. Let's say it does a three, I think best case scenario, let's say it does a three, five, which is totally possible for something like this. Because it's possible because there's not a ton coming out. It's got a very specific demographic um, that might see it multiple times. Like look to Wonder Woman last year that opens on uh, the weekend before last year. I mean, it had what a four X multiplier for a comic book movie opening over a hundred million dollars. Insanity. So high multipliers for a film like this, um, with uh, a set demographic might happen. So let's say 3.5 uh, on 41.6, that gets us 145. If it gets to 150, I think it's a breakout success, to be honest with you. 
Uh, if it gets 120, I think it's pretty good. If for some reason, and I don't think this is going to happen, if it drops below 100, um, which would be like a sub 2.5 multiplier, that would be really pretty bad news. I don't think that's going to happen. I'm guessing like 130 total take, a little bit above a 3x multiplier. Um, but definitely a, a decent performance for Ocean's 8, one that I was surprised on. I thought it was going to underperform in the 30s just because that marketing wasn't there, uh, but I was proven wrong, and we'll see how that multiplier plays out here over the next few weeks. Okay, that was number one, Ocean's 8. Um, number two was Solo, a Star Wars story, uh, coming in at 15.8 million, uh, a 46% drop. Um, it lost 46 theaters. Uh, its total take so far is $176 million on its third weekend. Does anybody else feel like Solo's been out for like two months now? It just, it feels like it's just, I've read so many articles about it. It's only three weeks ago that I did the post-mortem on this on opening weekend. Man, it feels like, it just feels like forever ago. Um, like it was, a, the response to the movie was not good. Nobody really likes it that much. Um, the people who have gone to see it are like mixed about it. Uh, a lot of people just didn't show up. Uh, it's a pretty massive flop for, um, for Disney. And for the Star Wars franchise, there's no way around that. You cannot argue that Solo is not a massive, massive disappointment for the entire corporation. Because that's how important these movies are to Disney. Um, and we'll see what they what they want to do uh, go, moving forward with the Star Wars franchise. You know, obviously the next episode is, I guess, already filmed. Or maybe not. I guess it's coming out December 2019. That's like a year and a half away. Uh, so I don't know where they're at with filming and production on that, but they might make t make a little bit of tweak to that movie. And then the big question to me is like, what are they going to do after that? Uh, like, is I don't know if it's even set out yet what their the plans are for twenty 2020 twenty and twenty twenty two. I'm not sure. I'm not sure what the what the wh which path they're going to take here because this was a really it wasn't just a bad performance. Like, oh, we it's like the wrong note. This was a movie that could have been amazing. Uh, and I, I know in the postmortem I said, hey, like nobody asked for that, this movie, and that's one of the reasons why it's doing so poorly. That's true. That's true. But if you had Lord and Miller direct this movie and just sort of say, hey, you know, blank check, you know, spend 200 million bucks, do whatever you really need to do, we'll come in and make sure that it sort of fits on brand just enough. But we're really going to give you free reign here. Uh, it would have been amazing. I think if they gave him the extra time and opened it up in December with Lord Miller's version, or whatever it was, because we'll never know, uh, I think it would have been very successful. Um, but Disney and you know people go off their uh, what's her name Kathleen Kennedy uh, or Catherine Kennedy I don't know one of the two she's a Kennedy um, they go after her but obviously it's a whole corporation here that has failed this the with this movie and uh, they. they the the problem here is they were too safe way too safe way too conservative they should have let lord and miller do their thing and they didn't and this is the end result i also think in a related note uh to disney and mcu uh, that if we got the edgar wright version of ant-man it opens to like 70 million and does like 210 million or more than that 250 million i think it does better than the one the peyton reed version of ant-man that we got um but who knows? You never know. Maybe the Lord and Miller version was a complete train wreck, and it made no sense. Uh, but I doubt it could do worse than this this version of Solo. Uh, so Solo is just you know it's a big massive flop, a uh, huge loss for uh, for Disney, and I think it will uh, honestly forever change the Star Wars brand. It's the first Star Wars film to ever flop. Okay, let's keep let's keep this trend moving. Uh, Deadpool two, uh, fourteen point uh, one million, great, thirty nine percent drop there. Uh, lost 340 theaters uh, per theater average was $3,700 actually higher than solo um, It's total take so far in week four is 279 million dollars. I know I've been all over the board with this movie I just thinking about like what I feel about it and its performance You know it has definitely recovered with the last couple of weekends. I know after the first weekend I was super down on it uh, it had dropped 65%, um, and it's third weekend, it dropped 46%, which was a lot better, and this weekend it was down 39%. So it is doing what I hinted that it could possibly do, like a Spider-Man Homecoming run, 
where there's a massive drop in the second weekend because of all the fanboys are gone. But then these legs start kicking in the third and fourth weekend where it's kind of empty. It's a really fun, interesting movie. It's an action movie. Um, you know, it's a hard R. It, it, it's going to pull people in because it's very engaging and interesting, right? Uh, and if there's not a lot out there, it's like, yeah, I'll go. See, I can, I can, on, most people can say, I can go see Deadpool 2 and be entertained. If I want to go see a movie, Deadpool 2 is out. I can go. I know it's going to be something that I'm going to enjoy on some level. Uh, so those sort of, um, the, I'm going to call it the general audience legs are kicking in here uh, on a third and fourth weekend. Um, 279 so far is 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 decent. Um, I thought it was going to go much higher than this. I think idea idealistically, ideally, <laughs> not idealistically, ideally, um, sorry, it's like late on a Monday and I'm super stressed out because of work. So my, my, uh, my talking is not very good. Um, so, uh, ideally Deadpool two, you know, I think should have opened in the one fifty range, uh, should have had a multiplier. Uh, the quality seemed pretty good. I didn't like the movie at all. Just to throw it out there, but other people uh, thought differently. Uh, I would say 2.7 ish. Uh, that's probably pretty high for multiplier, like a sequel like this. Maybe let's just say 2.5 to be fair. It should have been pushing 370 up into the $400 million range. That's not going to happen. Uh, so not a fantastic performance by Deadpool 2, but I can't really call it a flop. It's not really a flop. Maybe a slight underperformance. Um, but if the legs keep going like they did with Spider-Man Homecoming, uh, it could make up a lot of that ground to get into the, the really good performing territory. Um, number four this weekend, uh, this one I'm going to do a deep dive on just because I don't know. I'm so fascinated by this film. Uh, and I've talked about it and a couple of commenters, comment, uh, YouTube commenters have talked about it as well. Uh, hereditary from a 24, uh, opened up at 13.5 million on, uh, in about 2,900, almost 3000 theaters per theater average. Uh, was surprisingly strong, uh, four thousand five hundred eighty dollars. Um, this one was projected to do tracking wise high single digits. I thought it was going to do worse. I thought it was going to be like seven million dollars. Uh, and the reason I thought that was I thought A twenty four was wasn't going to release it on a ton of theaters. But this I think this is their widest release ever, pushing three thousand theaters. Usually they're just over two thousand theaters. So they put it out in a lot of theaters. It got a lot of good buzz. I mean, going into the weekend. Um, you know, I could see how people thought it was going to really break out. Um, you know, people, when the, the preview number came in, which was over a million bucks, people were freaking out. People were like, oh, man, it's going to do like, you know, 15. It's going to do over $20 million this weekend. Like, ball. I was like, nah, people. Like, go. I knew they were wrong the moment I went to go read through the Rotten Tomato audience reviews. And it was a total shit show of half star zero stars and then it was like like one star five stars one star five stars and it was just such a split reaction to this film and i was so fascinated by that reaction i thought i had to go out and see it so i did and as somebody who is a total horror film nerd and someone who loves what a24 has been doing the last few years i think they're in a, i think they're the most fascinating movie company right now they are the king of indie right now. And the um, openness that they approach these movies and sort of letting the directors do what they want to do and create, honestly, it's it's high art what they what they release. I mean, you know, look, even look past Moonlight, like uh, Ex Machina, uh, The Witch. Uh, there's just so many movies that they put out. Uh, it comes at night. Uh, and I bring, I'll bring that one up because it had a very similar reaction uh, or audience reaction as Hereditary. You know, both were horror films that opened up in early uh, June. Uh, so you're thinking, you know, summer movie season, uh, it comes at night, and Hereditary had really fascinating trailers that got people uh, hyped up about the movie uh, outside of the art circles and horror film circles. Um and I think that's one of the big reasons why Hereditary did so well this weekend. Uh, it's definitely a little bit of a breakout. Um, for A24, this is a home run. Like, 
the movie probably costs I, I don't have the budget but a, what five million bucks maybe ten million bucks not that much um and the fact that it did 13.5 i'm more impressed by the per theater average i was assuming that per theater average of 3200 dollars. now i was wrong right but i was right at the same time i was right because i knew a24 i knew what they had done before i know what type of movies they release um and i know how their movies end and i'm not gonna give anything away about um, no spoilers about this movie but it is, uh, I'll say this because I did see it, and I think I have a good perspective on this as a horror film nerd. It is one of the most insane wide release films I've ever seen in my life. It reminded me of the first time I saw Fight Club, and I was just like, and I saw Fight Club opening night when I was like 17 years old. I was like, what the freak did I just see? Like, that was insane. Uh, Hereditary might even be even more insane than Fight Club. The audience that I saw it with, and I'm here in Nashville, Tennessee, so it's you're very like middle of the world, middle class white people just going to the movies on a Saturday. Uh, they flipped out in the movie. These people were losing it, like they were laughing and they were screaming. Uh, not a normal audience reaction in a place like Nashville. Believe me, people are usually just super quiet and just shut up. Uh, but there was something special about this movie. And when you read through those audience reactions, it takes me right back to It Comes at Night, which had the same type of reaction from audiences. Um, And The Witch as well, both A24 films. So A24 is in a weird place, and I thought that this might happen. Um, They, for whatever reason, they feel the need to push these horror films out to wide audiences. And I get why they're doing that. They know that a horror film can attract uh, a more general audience than something like Ex Machina, which is a little bit more arty. Or even Moonlight, when Moonlight first came out, that was definitely a New York, Los Angeles release. You let it play there for a bit and expand it out. With their horror films, for some reason, they feel like there's a good opportunity to make some great money. Um you know, pushing it out wide. I'm looking through A24's release history. And again, they've only released 62 movies in total. They've been around since 2013. Uh, Their first big release was probably Spring Breakers, uh, which is a masterpiece, by the way. Um, Their biggest release ever, I want to make sure that this is true. Yeah, Hereditary is their biggest release ever. This This is really fascinating. Their top three releases all time, I was right on the money, are Hereditary, It Comes at Night, and The Witch. So A24 likes to push out their sort of edgy horror films uh, to a bigger audience. Uh, And I get that they feel like it's a good idea. And maybe financially I'm not seeing something on the back end. Um, But my sort of specialty is in marketing and customer experience. It's what I've made my career doing for the last 10 years. Uh, I don't think I've ever seen a company put out a product purposely to the wrong audience, have that audience or consumer get upset and have that be beneficial to them in the long run. Uh, and so maybe the, it's, there's a, there's a, some like asymmetrical strategy to what they're doing. You know, hereditary opened at 13.5 million. That's unbelievable. That's fantastic. It is going to sink like a stone, uh, in the next couple of days, the audience score on Rotten Tomatoes, and I've been tracking it the whole weekend, went from about a 60 something up to 71, up to 79. Now it's down to 59. So Hereditary got enough buzz where general audiences did show up to some degree to this. People who were curious showed up, who maybe not A24 fans or know them very well, or you know, aren't maybe like horror film buffs or art, art film buffs. Um, they showed up and they are livid, livid. The uh, cinema score was a D plus, right? So this is the tale of two audiences is what this is. And the, the audience that I'm a part of and sort of, and I won't get into my personal reaction to the film cause I'm not, I don't want to do that right now. Um, that I'm a part of is someone who is super into art films and likes to be challenged as a viewer. I'm with the critics. 92% around tomatoes like that's 
it's one of the highest rated films on Rotten Tomatoes ever. One of the highest horror films rated on Rotten Tomatoes. Uh, not only that, it's a 92% uh, Rotten Tomatoes. It's an 8.3 score out of 10, which is insanely high. And even crazier, the Metacritic score is 87 out of 100, which is just bonkers. Um, critics raved over this film. Absolutely raved. Um, and now that audience is the art film audience, is the horror film nerd audience. They're all part of that world. They're people who are, um, I, don't know, I hate the word culture because it's a stupid term. It's a group of people who have seen a lot of movies, have studied film on some level, either as an amateur or as an academic, but they have studied film. They're interested in how stories or how movies are created. They're interested in how movies are shot, and cinematography, the editing, the writing. They're sort of interested in the means of productions of a film as well as the final product that shows up on screen. And I think that's why I love this movie so much because it was so unorthodox in so many different ways. The cinematography was beautiful. The acting was off the charts. Um, so that's why there's a lot of love over there. What the film does not do at all is play to any sort of traditional horror tropes traditional horror genre conventions. That's what a general audience wants and needs out of a film like this. They want jump scares, they want a plot that they can follow, they want the mystery to be resolved at the end, and they want a hero or a protagonist to emerge safe. Uh, and I'm not being condescending, that's just the way that storytelling goes, and especially at the box office with movies. A traditional story follows genre convention and my conventions. It might undermine a couple of them to be interesting. Um, like let's say Oceans Eight undermined the heist film convention of have, let's have all women do it. So it's a little bit of an undermining, but kind of stuck to the traditional cadence of a heist movie, uh, resolution of a heist movie. So uh, when audience go to see something like Oceans Eleven or Oceans Eight, sorry, they know what they're getting and they're going to see what they want on the screen. Right, they have expectations, and those expectations are met. Hereditary, It Comes at Night, The Witch are all movies that told the mass audience, "Hey, come see this. You're going to be scared," and then they gave them a Gonzo bonkers art film, uh, which I, you know, I, I can't get the movie out of my head to be honest with you. It was just terrifying film, um, but uh, that does not translate at all to general audiences. D plus cinema score is uh, the kiss of death. This thing will have trouble getting the two X multiplier. It, it, it might, you know, I think it comes at night had a decent multiplier, um, but people absolutely, general audiences absolutely hated this. I think Deadline had a couple more data points if I can find it. Uh, on the cinema score for uh, Hereditary. Uh, okay, so uh, the pick was rated R, so it's skewed older. Uh, this is what I find really fascinating about the response to Hereditary. 70% uh, of the audience was over 25. Remember the over, there's over and under 25, that's the big barrier with uh, box office demographics, just how they're measured. The over 25s were 70% of the audience. They gave it a straight D on cinema score. Uh, the under 18 demo was a lot smaller. Um, only 9% of the audiences, they gave it a B. The overall under 25 audience was 30%, obviously, because over 25 was 70%. Uh, under 25 was 30%, they gave it a C. Um, so really, really fascinating. Uh, the Witch had a two point. 8x multiplier um so there's definitely a chance that it could do okay even with a really terrible um cinema score the witch had a c minus cinema score just for reference uh so hereditary is a little bit lower but just in that little segment of data there you have a big big story people over the age of 25 who saw this movie absolutely hated it uh and i'm not sure personally if i loved it and thought it was amazing or thought it was one of the worst movies I've ever seen in my life. I don't know yet. Like, that's how confusing that film was. Um, and, and I'll just say that. It's that confusing. Do not market it to mass audiences. Just do not do it. 
terrible, I think a huge mistake, and a real bait and switch, to be honest with you. And it's the third time they've done that um, to audiences, horror film audiences. It Comes a Night was, I think, even worse of a bait and switch, but it is what it is. So older people hated the movie. The youngest demographic thought it was okay, thought it, didn't think it was amazing, but for a horror film, a cinema score of a B is not terrible. So young people under 18 thought it was all right. Uh, and the sort of under 25s in general didn't think it was that great. So even that segment between 18 and 25 was much worse than uh, the under 18 year olds, uh, teenagers, right? And there's probably not that many, obviously it's rated R. Um, so I, Hereditary, there's, I could literally do an entire show about this movie. I don't want to do that, but like some big takeaways here. It performed very, very well. Uh, the per theater average of a $4,600 per theater is fantastic for an A24 film. Uh, their big wide release, I think, paid off this weekend. I think it will crash and burn over the next few weeks. Uh, and I think even more importantly, the home entertainment prospects for Hereditary are terrible now. Uh, now, I could be totally wrong. Someone from A24 is probably listening. Is like, this guy's completely full of shit. He's not what he was talking about. The word of mouth for this film is toxic. Uh, so do you think that makes someone more or less likely to order it on VOD? Do you think that makes someone more or less likely to order it on EST digital release for $15? It's going to be worse every single time. And this is like from somebody from a marketing and customer experience background. It's just like such a terrible idea to release films like this to general audiences and think that it's going to go okay. Um, they may have made $13.5 million, but... If they, I think there is a way for movies like The Witch, which I think might have gone limited first, but anyways, Hereditary and It Comes at Night, I think there was a way to market them differently. I think there was a way to release them differently so that they would be more success, successful. The interesting thing about Hereditary and its marketing, if you had, if they had marketed as this is one of the craziest movies you'll ever see, it, you'll ever see, it's just completely bonkers. If that was the marketing, it would have done better and people would have expected what was on screen instead they marketed it as oh it's the scariest movie since the exorcist and it's like oh, i've seen the exorcist it's pretty scary very traditional tagline that people throw out there for a movie like this audiences expected a fairly straightforward um scary um kind of maybe paranormal horror film uh, that's not what they got what they got was a hard art film um that honestly doesn't really have much of a place outside art films art film theaters um now i say that but if they had released it limited on a limited release and said this is the craziest movie you'll ever see and sort of road show it a bit to new york and los angeles get like get like real buzz going about what's on screen the problem is that there was buzz about this movie just on the marketing and the look of it there wasn't a lot of general audience hype about what is actually on the screen and what you see in the film i think they could have done that with a more limited roadshow type release uh, tell people it's the absolutely most nuts thing you'll ever see build that up and build it build and build it and then eventually do a wide release with all of this sort of organic buzz from the big cities um spreading and the tagline, this is something you've never seen before. Um, I think it could have done even better than what it's going to end up doing. It'll end up at like, what, 30 million bucks probably? Maybe a little bit over 30? It could have ended up at 40 or 50 if they went that route, I think. What the fuck do I know? I'm just an amateur dude who likes to talk about movies. Um, but I, I, I could just, the bottom line to me is A24 is, is making big mistakes by pulling bait and switches with audiences for horror films. The Witch, I don't necessarily count because people knew what that was all about for the most part. And people went into The Witch thinking that it was going to be, I don't know, like an ironic horror film. And it is just like so naturalistic and stark and offers you nothing in terms of exposition. It's amazing. It's one of my favorite horror films of all time. Um, but the same thing happened when It Follows came out. Um, it had a ton of buzz from the award circuit or festival circuit, uh, got a sort of wide release and the audience just hated it. Uh, I went to, a, uh, when it opened up, it was March, 2015, I think, I think that's right. Or was it way before that? I can't even remember anymore. Um, 
I saw it in New York City on like a Tuesday afternoon with like 30 people in the audience. And I was enraptured. Another one of my favorite movies of the last 10, 20 years. Uh, we, I mean, we really, what's crazy about this is we are in a horror renaissance and it's being wasted on general audiences who expect like traditional, like old school, mid 2000s horror, horror film trash is what they want. And that, that, that trash, but filler. I loved, I loved wrong term just as much as anybody. I saw it opening week and I had a great time, but hereditary is not wrong turn, right? It's a completely different genre almost. And it's weird that we're going through this renaissance of horror films and there are big hits like split and get out and it of course so there's like some of them are rising to the top but those films aren't as good as these films to be honest with you um they're not as as edgy they're not as experimental they're not um pushing the horror genre back to a more primal sort of fear uh that you saw a lot of that you saw in the 1970s with like i spit on your grave and last house on the left and the Hills Have Eyes, those movies are disgusting and vile. Um, Cannibal Holocaust. They're pushing the horror genre, these new films, Hereditary, The Witch, it follows back in that direction, and I think it really unnerves people because the films are terrifying, and they hit at a feeling inside of people that they're not used to feeling when they go see a horror movie. Um, And so I think with Hereditary, the story here is, this is my deep dive and ramble on it, um, the story here is that uh, had a very good opening weekend. I do fear that it's going to fall apart here because of that audience score and cinema score. And I think it's going to really struggle on home video or not home video, home entertainment platforms. And I think if you mention it comes at night on a public forum, people are going to be like, I effing 80% of people are going to be like, I freaking hate that movie, even though it's basically a masterpiece, right? So it's don't market art films as mass releases. That's the lesson here. Um, I think maybe it makes money in the back end. I just don't, I, I feel like it's a lost opportunity for a great movie like this. Or now I don't even know it's a great movie for a very interesting movie like hereditary. Um, okay. That's my round of hereditary. Uh, number five was Avengers infinity war. Um, 31% drop. That's a really good drop. Uh, 7.2 million lost 700 theaters. Uh, total tech so far for Avengers infinity war is six fifty five. Where does that put that on the all-time list? Let's see here. Oh, sweet. It is now. It just passed um, Jurassic World this weekend. So Avengers Infinity War is in the top five all-time uh, movies. It'll probably, yeah, definitely pass Titanic, um, which is at 659. So it'll end up as number four all-time. Uh, I do not see it beating Black Panther. That's probably not going to happen. Um, okay, number six was a drift from STX, 5.2 million, a 55% drop, not very good. Um, per theater average was bad, uh, $1,700 per theater in its second weekend, gross. Uh, total take so far was 21 point, uh, or 22 million bucks, essentially. Um, I talked a lot about that one last week, and then where, you know, if it gets in the 30s, it's okay. If it gets in the 40s, it's a big win. Um, I don't, I don't know what's going to end up but with a drop like that. Oof, 30s is going to be kind of rough, I think. Um, but that's a drift. Um, not a great performance, but not a super flop either from the STX film. Uh, number seven was a book club. Uh, another great drop. Let's take a look at the drops for book club real quick. Um, one of those, you know, older adult films that has really caught on. People are seeing a lot during the week. Um, 25% drop in its second weekend, 30% drop in its third weekend, and its fourth weekend uh, had a 39% drop with $4.2 million. Um, great performance, really just cruising. A total, not maybe as amazing as Hidden Figures, it's like gradual um, decline towards tens of millions of dollars. Um, book, book club is definitely, uh, on a somewhat similar track of just slowly leaving the movie theater, but making so much money on the way out. Uh, it's currently at $57 million for book club, $57 million in its fourth weekend. Who knows where it's going to end up? Uh, it could just cruise on to like 70 million bucks. Um, which would be amazing for that movie. Uh, number eight was in a wide release opener. I don't really know what to talk about with this one. Uh, Hotel uh, Artemis uh, from Global Road. Um, really strange film. 
didn't really make a whole lot of sense to me. I saw the trailer drop and I was like, huh, like this seems like it should be a bigger movie than it appears in this marketing. Jodie Foster, uh, Sterling K. Brown, uh, Jeff Goldblum, uh, Jenny Slate, uh, Charlie Day is in this movie. Um, I don't know much about Global Road. They've only had three releases all time. They're brand new, started this year. Uh, they put out Midnight Sun in March, and they put out Show Dogs in May. This is their third release, uh, Hotel Artemis in June here. Um, so they're brand new. They kind of don't know what they're doing yet. I don't really know what their story is. I imagine they're owned by a much bigger company. I have to look it up as I'm talking to you guys to see, because I'm too curious not to. Um, formed in 2017, so it's brand new. Uh, out in Los Angeles, of course. R Rob Friedman is the... Um, okay, so it's an old uh, Lionsgate guy. Uh, he was the co-chairman of Lionsgate uh, Motion Picture Group. Uh, was doing that for a while. Then he was at Paramount. Um, so he's just like an old um, C-level guy from the movie theater business. I think he wanted to start his own company. He now has. He needs to figure out how to market these films better. Uh, Hotel Artemis is also not a good movie, um, which is probably why it didn't open very well. One of the reasons. 59% uh, on Rotten Tomatoes. Audiences ravaged the film with 39%. I trust that Rotten Tomato score. Uh, who's going to troll this movie? Um, cinema score was a C minus. Oh, terrible. Um, I don't know what happened here. It just, it, it's not a good movie, and no one thought to make it good. And they tried to push it out on this new distribution. It was like, it's like a perfect storm of failure. Uh, 3.2 million on 2,400 theaters per theater average on an opening weekend of $1,300. Go F yourself. Like, you're not even trying at this point. Um, this has direct VOD written all over it. Um, it sure has big names. I could tell from the trailer it was a complete mess of a movie. I don't know. It wasn't even a script. I don't know. I'm bashing this movie too much probably, but it just such it's like releasing a product without beta testing it you know it's just like it's gonna be trash people are gonna get it and think it's trash and it's not gonna sell anything i mean that's just the nature of basic business principle so i mean this one was sort of faded to fail i think um okay so that was eight number nine was upgrade from uh blumhouse tilt um i think their best performing film of all time 9.3 million dollars so far it did 2.4 this weekend a decent 49% drop. Added a single theater. That's great. Uh, poor theater average in its second weekend was 1635. That's not great. Um, but this was micro budget, I think four million. Um, so I'm sure it'll find a way to make money if it only costs that much to make. And they didn't really market it that much, I'll tell you that. Uh, I think the marketing budget deadline time was like 15 million, maybe, mostly on social. Uh, so very tiny marketing budget on this one. Uh, okay, so number 10 was Life of the Party from Warner Brothers. 38% drop. That's good. Um, per theater average, not good. Uh, $1,100, almost $1,200. Uh, total take so far for Life for Life of the Party is $50 million bucks in its fifth weekend. Not a massive flop. Not a great uh, overperformance either. I'm not sure what the production budget was on this, but I guarantee you the marketing costs $20, $30 million bucks at least. Uh, on top of probably, what, $40 million? So, I think it's gonna, it'll probably get into the profit territory once it hits home entertainment, but not, definitely not before it leaves the box office. Uh, okay, so that's the top 10. Uh, big stories, obviously, Ocean's 8 performs kind of right when expectations maybe a little bit better than tra what Tracking was saying. Uh, Hereditary, Dipple 2 has a great drop, so it might play well in the later weeks here. Uh, Hereditary uh, popped off. Um, but I think it's going to collapse in the next couple of weeks just because the audiences, the general audiences, I think, hated it. The horror, uh, horror film nerds and art film people loved it. Uh, but they're like, you know, 12% of the audience. Um, maybe 20%. Uh, Hotel Artemis crashed and failed from Global Road, the new studio. Okay, so uh, limited releases, anything worth mentioning? Uh, I would like to mention Won't You Be My Neighbor, the um, uh, Mr. Rogers, sorry, I totally forgot his name, Mr. Rogers documentary. Um, 
that came out 29 theaters, $1,600, uh, sorry, $16,000 per theater. Uh, it has made uh, $475,000 so far. It's from Focus. This is the second documentary that's going to break out. Uh, the Ruth Bader Ginsburg um, documentary definitely broke out in $9.1 million for a documentary about a Supreme Court justice. I think what should be my neighbor will be will do better than that. It is. I saw a little segment of it on Sunday morning because I'm old. I watch CBS Sunday morning. Uh, it, it looked unbelievably good and really. I don't know. It's kind of funny. Like Mr. Rogers is like the exact antidote to Trump. He's like a super super nice guy who cares about everybody. Uh, who wants to help everybody, and obviously we live in a society now that is not like that. So I think it's really going to attract a lot of different people to, to go see it and kind of feel good about things again. Uh, uh, I'm just getting super political now. I'm sorry. Um, okay, so that's just the limited stuff that was out. Nothing else I want to talk about with that. Uh, let's talk a little bit about what's coming up in the rest of uh, June here. Uh, Incredibles 2 is going to be absolutely massive this weekend um, coming up here. Uh, tag is coming out. Has anybody seen any recent marketing for this movie? I feel like the trailer dropped and then it's just been radio silence for like the last three months. I haven't seen anything for this movie. Um, I do not see it opening very well. Ballpark, I would say high teens, maybe 17, 18 million bucks for tag, which is way too low for a movie like that. Incredibles. I have no idea what the Incredibles is going to open at. Um, I can't even remember what the original opened at. Uh, the original opened at 70 million back in 04. That's a long time ago. Uh, let's take a look at the adjusted though. Uh, 103 million dollars adjusted. I see. I see this one doing really far north of that because Incredibles is one of it's one of the most beloved films of the last 20 years. I don't know what it is about that movie. I saw it opening weekend. I was like, that's oh, pretty good. Uh, people just adore the film. And so I see this doing well north of 100. I am thinking 140, 150s, maybe higher. Uh, it's kind of wide open this this next weekend, so I think it's going to do quite well. Tag's not going to do so well. Uh, Superfly, um, it's a remake coming out 13th of June, which is this Wednesday, I believe. Um, so I guess it counts as next weekend. No idea how that's going to do. 2200 theaters from Columbia. Might play okay. Uh, and then the weekend after, uh, Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom. I might do a special on that one because that one's really uh, interesting to dive into. Tracking's all over the place, saying 130s, 150s. The original broke the all-time record um, at the box office. Uh, oh, did it break the record? Did it break Avengers? I can't even remember back then. Uh, three years ago, it came out. Uh, Jurassic World just blew everybody out of the water. Tracking was in like the low 100s in a popped off at over 200 million dollars does that same thing happen here the tracking is currently 130 to 150 uh it might have changed recently i don't think it's going to do much higher than that i think it might actually do lower than that uh there isn't even a possibility uh probably not i'm getting crazy saying it might open under 100 i don't think that's going to happen probably uh the reviews are not good um Let's see what it has on Rotten Tomatoes. Uh, 59% on Rotten Tomatoes from 95 reviews. Ouch. Uh, it's So it's clearly not a great movie. Um, I don't know if people care all that much. The first one wasn't good. The first one doesn't have a great rating on Rotten Tomatoes, but people showed up for that. I just I get the feeling that nobody's interested in this movie. No one really asked for a sequel to Jurassic World. The first one was just all nostalgia for Jurassic Park. Uh, I think this one opens well below 150 Obviously, it's not getting anywhere close to the original. Uh, I think probably one, 115, 120 below tracking, I would say. Uh, that's how I'm seeing it right now. I could be totally wrong. Uh, then to close out June is Sicario, Day of Soldado, which I think is going to break out. Uh, I think Uncle Drew is also going to do quite well. Uh, I just, it has like a feeling to it that I, just, I feel it's going to pop off. Uh, then we're in July. I'm not going to go, you know, and then Ant-Man is sort of the July 4th weekend, I guess, uh, or week. Uh, First Purge opens up on July 4th. Um, Hotel Transylvania, Skyscraper, Equalizer 2. What the hell is that? Uh, Unfriended Dark Web looks terrible. Um, 
and uh, that's mostly it for the summer right now. Uh, so the big ones to watch out for in Incredibles 2, obviously, in Jurassic World. I might do a little special in Jurassic World. We'll see. Uh, in any event, thanks for listening, guys. Uh, sorry I'm a little bit late this week. Uh, I'll be on time next week. Uh, this has been the Wildline Podcast. <laughs>